In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a Roblox UGC item very nice and easy. I'm going to show you a Halloween item today. Keep the Halloween theme. Thank you for all the support on my last UGC tutorial. Comment down below any other tutorials you want me to make, any other UGC item ideas I could make a tutorial on. But anyway, let's start. To starting any UGC creation, you're going to need a dummy. So to start here, just load up Roblox Studio. I just, I just like to delete the spawn location. You don't need it. Go to plugins and use rig builder. Then go block rig. I like block rig. It's pretty good. And then go to the properties here and change the origin position to zero comma three comma zero. As you can see, it just plops nicely in the center. Go to the workspace explorer thing here. Right click on the dummy export selection. Here, you need to save the dummy onto your computer somewhere where you know where it is. If you don't know where it is, that's useless. Next, we're going to go to blender. I'm going to go file import wavefront obj now find where your computer has this saved i have it here so we go dummy obj make sure it's the obj not the M mtl one and now we've got it in to blender so i'm going to click on it here and we're going to start i'm going to quickly just do r z 180 to flip it around so it's looking at me quickly before we start loads of people want to know how to make their blender look like me by default it looks a bit rubbish something like this so you want to let mine just go up to here this little right arrow click it down change it to flat change it to texture and then turn on shadow and cavity you also want to ch change the type to both by default it's on world change it to both and copy these settings here and it should look pretty good something like this so now we're gonna do shift a mesh and then add a sphere so I like that sphere. And I'm going to click the settings here. And then I'm going to change the segments down. I think I'm going to go something to try 16. 16. That works. 16. And then I'm going to try something like maybe 12 on there. That looks good. You know, maybe 10. 10. Don't need that much. Okay. So we're going to now do G and Z to move it up the Z axis. To go into these side views, just press your number pad keys. 1, 3, and 7. So number 1. Go in front view. GZ and GZ basically moves it up. G to move, Z to lock it onto the Z axis. I'm not going to do S to scale and Z to lock it on the S Z axis. Something like that. And I'm also going to do S and Y to kind of like squish the pumpkin shape down a bit. Now we're going to go into edit mode using tab. Tab on your keyboard to go into edit mode. We're going to press A to deselect all and then Alt and click this loop. As you see, Alt selects the whole loop. And if we go Alt and then Shift, Alt, Shift, Alt, click. Shift, Alt, click, Shift, Alt, click. You can see it selects them all. If you want to do Shift and Alt, click to all of these, as you see, we're starting to select the different loops. And here we're going to do S on our keyboard, S to scale it in. And as you see, by scaling it in, it kind of creates a pumpkin kind of look. I'm going to do S and Y again, just to quickly scale that out a bit more. Maybe don't want it too hard. And then we'll do Control I to invert that. And then we'll select this bottom vert. And you have to also go Z to wireframe. And then select this other bottom one. So Z just goes in and out of solid mode and wireframe. And basically now we're going to go and do Control E and mark sharp. This will basically make these sharp no matter what when you smooth them. So if I do A now, A, face, shade, smooth. As you see, it is smooth. So if I go into texture mode, it's smooth. But those edges do have a bit of sharpness. I'm actually going to select these loops again. Um, I'm going to make them a bit smaller. I don't like how it's quite subtle, the effect. I'm going to make it a lot harsher. So if I do S again, S will just make it go in. I'm going to go really harsh with it. And then I'm going to go, I'm going to add modifier and subdivision surface. Basically what subsurf does, it just kind of adds more topology. As you see here, I've just applied it and it does add just that little bit more to help get that detail. And honestly, this is starting to look more like a pumpkin. I'm going to quickly go and select this one vert by clicking here. I am going to turn on proportional editing with this little button here. And I'm also going to go and select the bottom one as well, shift and select. And now I'm going to do S and Z to move it down. You can scroll. The more you scroll up, it will like go, do, do, go down and affect less. The more you go up, the more it'll affect. And you could just scroll and find like a good amount you want to affect it by. This is just kind of creating a little dent in the top and bottom to make it just more like a pumpkin. As you can see, that is looking a lot more like a pumpkin now. Let me bring the dummy back in here. And now we're going to have to scale this up a bit just so that we can actually have it covering the entire head. Something like that. And now we're going to do Shift A, Mesh, and add a cylinder. With this cylinder, I'm going to change the vertices to six. I want it to be very low poly. I'm going to go to number one, view, so number one. G, Z to move up, scale. I'm going to zoom in a bit here. And there, it's going to be like a little step. So we're going to edit mode using tab. Z to go into wireframe. A to deselect all. I'm just going to quickly box select this, like this. You don't know how to do this. You just have to click this box up here, and you can box select. 
Now I'm going to do R to rotate. Oh, turn up the portion editing. R to rotate. And then G to move. I'm also doing a little S to scale. I just need a bit more. So E to extrude, S to scale, R to rotate, G to move. And something like that works nicely for a cheeky little stem. As you see, we're starting to get a nice pumpkin coming together now, which is pretty cool. And here, this could be it. This could be your pumpkin hat done. However, I'm going to go here and I'm going to add a little carved face. So to carve a face, you want to select it. By the way, what I just did here was I went and selected the top. So you tap the bo top with click and then shift, click the bottom, control J. It'll merge them into one mesh, which is kind of handy. And now I'm going to go select on the pumpkin, edit mode with tab. I'm going to press 1 to go into the front view. And this is where we want to pick our face. I do want this to be mirrored. So I'm actually going to um, L on this top stem. L and then P to, to, to separate it. So now they're separate again, even though you just joined them. I'm going to go into side view here and do Z and select half of this pumpkin, just like that. I didn't want to select that much. Select just something like that. Delete vertices. By doing delete and vertices, we've deleted half here. I'm going to go add modifier, mirror modifier, and the clipping, turn it on. And now you can see we have our pumpkin mirrored. This means anything we do to this side will happen to this side. So we go, okay, yeah, basically. What I'm going to do here, carve the face. I'm going to press the K key, and it brings up the knife tool. And what we're going to start with, I'm going to start with the eyes. So I'm going to go just select this vert, this vert. I'm going to go to around here. Here, here, just left click, left click, left click, and then hit enter. I've created this kind of like triangle shape. Now we're gonna go up here and change it from vertice mode to face mode. And face mode, now we can do click, shift, click, shift, click, shift, click, shift, click, shift, click, to select the, all the holes in all the faces inside where we want to delete. Press delete faces. As you can see, we've just created two very simple eyes. We're gonna also go back to vertice mode by clicking the little dot one here. So yeah, now we're now gonna do a mouth, go K again to go into the knife tool. I'm gonna to click and just kind of like create this jaggedy mouth, something like this. I'm gonna create a little tooth coming out um, like that. But you can do this however you like and something like that works. I'm gonna do enter here. And we've only got one line. I'm gonna go back into the mode with K and then click here and do another line, something like this here. Do another little tooth here because we're mirrored, it's gonna look cool, it's like a vampire. So, I want to go back into the face mode and select all the faces on the inside that we want to delete. This shouldn't be too hard, just got to go quick, 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 delete faces. Okay, there, as you can see, this is starting to look really cool. But if you ever go into Roblox, you'll actually notice that if I turn my back face curling here, you go into Roblox and you see someone wearing this item. If you look from the inside, you'll actually see it's like invisible. Um, this is basically because. If you've got a side showing, only one side you can see, the other side's invisible. So as you look in here, you can see, but it's like invisible. It's kind of weird. But basically, um, to fix that, you want to click on the pumpkin. Make sure you do not have the stem as one. Make sure the stem is separate for this bit again. Go add modifier and add a solidify modifier. This just makes it solid. As you can see, that basically makes it so it's thick and you can change the thickness here uh, in the thickness parameter and then change that as thick or as thin as you like. You can have a thick pumpkin if you want. This doesn't affect anything. It does double the amount of topology you have, but the bigger it is, doesn't make a difference. You're like, whoa. Okay, um, but basically why you can have it thin or you can have it thick. You can go in or you can go out. I like how it out looks to be honest, but I should probably go in so it doesn't eat up all the stem. Something like that I'm really happy with. So that is the pumpkin more or less done. So I'm going to go here, select the stem, select the thing. But before you do control J, do alt C, mesh. This will basically um, apply all the modifiers, then do control J. And now it's looking really good. This is how to make a pumpkin. This one is over the UGC limits. I could definitely optimize this better if I wanted. There is quite a lot of topology here, especially on the inside. You do not need this much. But it's just a beginner tutorial. We're not going to go through all that retopology stuff this early on. If you're a beginner, you don't need to know it. But yeah, basically, this is a prequel cool pumpkin Halloween hat. I hope you enjoyed. Please leave a like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.